Hey you guys, I spent $375 on three very expensive makeup palettes and I bought two of the same one like a dummy. Um, but we are going to review two, not three. Ugh, break my heart, because actually the one that I didn't order is the one that I really, really want. But we're gonna review two of the Pat McGrath new eyeshadow palettes. It's very exciting. Um, everybody has been curious about these. The packaging is just very cool through and through. It's a heavy freaking palette. So I ordered two, so I have two of these. This is the subliminal palette. And then I do also have the submersive palette. Submersive? Why do I keep wanting to call this submissive? Submersive palette. Okay, I'm gonna get that stuck in my head. These eyeshadows are made in Italy through and through everything, the packaging, the weight of the palette, the freaking mirror, the shadows themselves, the presentation, everything feels very, very luxe. It is Pat McGrath, let's remember that. She is a celebrity makeup artist. She is just a genius with makeup, really. Her work is some of the best. I admire her a lot. I have done reviews on almost every launch. Some of them I have had some pretty intense negatives. Um, you guys know I always pro and con everything and I have not held back my opinion on, you know, the past couple of launches having a few issues. So we are gonna go through every color in the two palettes that I have. The third one that is a duplicate, I'm gonna give away to one of you guys. So be sure to look in the description box below for details on how to enter this giveaway. It'll be super simple. So this is what it actually looks like. It's kind of like a brick of gold and it reminds me almost of like a clutch. Like I would actually like go out on the town with this. Bam, you open this up and it's a beautiful mirror and you get 10 glorious eyeshadows. They are a variety of finishes. So there are some mattes in here, which I really, really love because you can go from a very daytime look to something really, really loud and fun to just more of a basic evening. I mean, you can kind of play around with these and do a lot. Let's take a look at the subliminal palette. This one is gorgeous. This one has a few shades that were already launched in those kits that I last reviewed with the eye gloss and it had like individuals. These right here, like this guy, side by side, same shadow. This is the astral white pigment. I feel like these in the palette are much better. This individual, although I love this color so much and it's so vibrant, was kind of crumbly and had a lot of fallout. Now something really interesting about these is there is basically no fallout. It's weird. It's almost like, eh? because they blend so well and normally you, in my opinion, sacrifice a little bit of fallout for a great blend. You know, on my Natasha Denona palettes or a Lorac Pro, those have a significant amount of powdery kind of fluff to them where you have to tap off the excess, but they blend so well. And I can kind of hear you in the comments that you're gonna say, hey, like, wasn't that your issue with the Anastasia subculture palette? That palette had a lot of fluff and fallout, but the blend was awful, so it was kind of like, well, if I'm dealing with fallout, like I at least want it to look very airbrushed. You know what I'm saying? So this has no fallout and it looks airbrushed. It's crazy. And the colors wear all day long, like they do not crease. So I'm wearing a bunch of these shadows right now. I'm gonna walk you through everything I did for this eye look. It is now like 410 and I've had this shadow on all day long. It has not moved. It is still bright. It almost looks neon. It almost looks lit within. I think it's so good. So I want to show you like the fallout thing that I'm talking about. Like there's just, I'm pressing hard in there. There's really nothing fluffing everywhere. It just grabs onto the brush, go through a blend. It's still really hot in California. I'm wearing this because I wanted to, I wanted to look cute and I'm regretting it now. Okay. So let's first go through the subliminal palette. So we have Skin Show Nude, which is gorgeous. I'm wearing it as my highlight today. It is my favorite highlight between the two highlights in the two palettes that I have. Then you have Depth, which is just a nice, more cool toned matte brown. You have the shade Ultimate Taupe. I used that as my initial crease, transition type of a shade. Next door, you have Pale Gold. Oh my God. Like really, you guys, this is just, unreal, it's so smooth. I'm gonna show you again so that you just understand I'm barely pressing. There's, I mean, there's nothing wet on my arm. There's no base, there's no nothing. And it just, it's just so good. 
Then next door, we have a really fun color called VR Violet. Now this one you can wear just on its own. I have it underneath right here on my lower lash line. But if you put this on top of a black or a dark brown color, it just really comes to life. It is such a pretty color. Then we have Extreme Black, which Extreme Black is in all three palettes. And this is one of the best matte black shadows I have ever used. I'm gonna keep one of these palettes on my vanity just to have that shade close by because it did not have any fallout, but it packed on my lid so smoothly and just blended perfectly and other shadows layer on top of it like a dream. It does not crease, it is intense in pigment, it's not patchy. I just think this is such a cool, well done black that I don't mind that they use the same black in all three palettes. It is different than the black in the other kit that I reviewed. This is the dark matter pigment. This had more of a sheen to it. The one that's in the palettes is more of a true matte. Then next door you have Lilac Dusk, which is just a very pretty lilac shade. It's not too shiny, it's very wearable. The pigment is nice. There's nothing that I'm like, oh my God, that's the best shade ever, but it's just a beautiful, well done color. Next to that, we have Substance, also gorgeous. And then we have the Showstopper. This is Blitz Blue. I love this. This is the blue of my dreams. You know, this is a blue that I believe they had in that initial launch. I lost it, I don't know where it went. I have wanted to use it again, but in this beauty room, like things go missing all the time. Um, and this one is just such a vibrant blue. It's how I want navy blue to always look and I buy this color all the time and then it ends up looking kind of muddy and dark and not like what I imagined. This blue is so, so good. Then we have astral white, which you know, you've seen me apply this in my other video. I will link that below. It is absolutely stunning. This is what I hoped Rihanna's palette was gonna be like. I'm just gonna go there. I don't care, you guys. You think that I went too hard on that palette. I don't think I did because I didn't like it. I didn't get excited about it. And I wanted all of them to be like this. I didn't think they did that. I felt like they had tons of fallout. They were hard. They were difficult to work with. They did not look pretty on their own. They were chunky, dry, and they just were not for me. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> She nails it with this one too. This is just really incredible. Look at these shades. They are so wearable. You can do so much. You have all your basics in here. You can go matte. You can go matte with a little bit of a shimmer or you can go full speed right here. So let's take a look at these shades. This is the Subversive palette. We have the shade Skin Show Fever. This is more of a champagne skin show than Skin Show Nude. This one I don't love on me as much as Skin Show Nude, but I think depending on your skin tone, it could work better for you. I can't use this as a highlight on my brow bone. It just is a little bit too deep in color for me, but as a highlight on the cheek, you definitely could do that. It's very buttery in consistency. And again, these wear really, really well, so that's impressive also. Next to that, we have High Creature. I wore this all over my lid today, and it stays looking bright all day long. Okay, next to that we have Deep Shade, which is a beautiful creamy chocolate matte brown. Love this shade. You can use it so many different ways and it's just, it's very, very blendable without being patchy. Next to that we have Gigabyte, which I want to look good on me, but looks absolutely horrendous and crappy. It just does not go with my eye color, but if I open this up, that's the color I wanna play with the most. And I'm like, ooh, how can I make that work for me? Because it's so beautiful. But I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe I will. Give me a little time. All right, next to that, we have VR Pink. This is like the hot color of the season. I feel like every freaking palette has this. This one is probably the best one that I have seen. Just look at that. I also wanna show you really quick like what some of these shadows look like on their own versus on top of a black. So those are extreme black, and then that's that VR pink right here. Now, if I put VR pink on top of black, it immediately becomes so interesting. It has so much depth and it's just really eye-catching. I love it. It makes a smoky eye more wearable in my opinion. Really, really into that. Okay, bottom row, we have extreme black. We have the shade Lazorus, which is just a beautiful wearable, kind of shiny, not shiny, shiny, it's not glittery, but it's just a nice satiny, bordering metallic. It's just really, really pretty. It translates really well on the lid. It looks different on the lid than it does in the pan. And it's kind of just this chocolatey, beautiful shade. I love it. Next to that, we have Black Metal. 
really, really cool. I have swatched this only. I have not worn this on my lid yet, but it has a lot of micro glitter in here, but the micro glitter actually stays put. It doesn't fly everywhere. It doesn't fall on your face. So I'm really into that. We have Blitz Amethyst, which I love. This one is the most powdery out of all of them, but oh my God, it is just next level as far as like the duochrome and the shininess of it. It's so, so super pretty. Next to that, we have Astral Ghost Orchid, which I will tell you guys, that is the first shade that I swatched when I opened these palettes up and I immediately was disappointed. I was like, well, this is absolute BS. Why did I pay $125 for a freaking shadow palette. And I was really upset because when you swatch this one on its own, it kind of just doesn't really do anything. You can see, I just put that up here. It really doesn't. It's just like, this is pissing me off, right? But this particular color over black, just, I'm gonna show you guys, it kills it. It is just so effing intense. So it looks very similar to this one over here, but like in my monitor, it's looking similar, but it has more of an actual pink hue to it. And it just has so much activity in the glitter. I love it. It's a beautiful shade. Do not swatch that one. Go mm, and like count it out. It's actually super, super pretty. So I like the palette, but before we leave the video, I do wanna run down what is on my eyes. It was actually very easy to achieve this look. So very quickly, we will go through. I have the shade Ultimate Taupe in my crease. I just very quickly fan that in the crease to give a little bit of a barrier to the black shadow that I was gonna be laying down. I then took Extreme Black on a flat shadow brush and I packed that all over the lid. I took a smaller brush and kind of buffed out the edge a little bit into the crease and this was my base. I knew that I wanted to put something really eye-catching on top of it. I then went into High Creature and I could have kept this as is. I could have stopped the look there. It laid beautifully on top of the black. I just really enjoy that black. It is one of the rarest black eyeshadows I've ever used. No joke. Just everything laid on top of it so perfectly and evenly. So I started at the inner corner, went almost all the way out because I wanted to leave a little bit of the black shadow to kind of peek through and give a little bit of depth. Then I looked in the mirror and I was like, hey, we're not done. We need to lay on some more brightness. And I went into VR Violet and I did kind of the same routine, but kind of left a little bit um, more of the high creature shade showing. And then I got really carried away and I was like, hey, let's take uh, this astral ghost orchid and kind of pop it in the center with my fingertip. And then I stopped. I was like, take a break, put on some liner, some lashes. And I decided to do a little bit of work on the lower lash line. I went into the shade deep shade. And why, that's so funny to say that. I took a pencil brush, smudged out the lower lash line. Then I took VR Pink and I pulled that about halfway on the lower lash line. It added a really pretty effect. I love the way this looks. Popped in a little bit of a plum liner on my waterline. And as a final step, I wanted to highlight the brow bone. So I did go into Skin Show Fever and I popped that right under the high point of my brow. Boom, called it good. This is the look, it's been on all day. It's doing good, it's not creasing. Um, this is not the first look I have done with these palettes. I have done other looks and everything has impressed me. So there we have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the swatches and chatting about a crazy expensive palette. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is it worth it, is it not? Would you buy something like this? Check the description box below for a chance to win your own Pat McGrath palette. That was my mistake for ordering two of the same palettes, but my mistake, your gain. So enter, check the description box for details and good luck. Thanks for hanging out guys. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Mwah.